This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week 7 in the NFL is just around the corner, and we got Ryan Williams back with us once again for today, uh, back from unpacking, back from unloading, all that fun stuff, and uh, a little reprieve from that. So we'll talk to Ryan for today to get his read on Week 7 in the NFL, breaking down some pretty big out-of-conference games in an AFC North battle. We'll get Ryan's read on those games and his favorite bets across Week 7 in the NFL. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sadis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com joined here once again as mentioned by ryan williams check him out on twitter at ryan alexander underscore w you can find uh all of his stuff there at ryan alexander underscore w ryan it is a delight to have you back with us here for today as i mentioned you've been unpacking which sounds not fun um <laughs> starting a whole lot of new stuff for you so i'm, I'm happy to have you here how you doing yeah i'm doing well i'm doing well it's fun to be back in the seat with you jim I'm hoping that uh, we can, you know, I, I hope for the people who follow me on Twitter that I can get back into regularly putting out my card and, and getting some action in for them because it has been kind of a crazy couple of days for me. But this is a fun week seven slate. And like I talk about always with you, Jen, we don't get too many NFL weeks, so we got to make the most of them when we can. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's limited sample as always, which is not fun, always kind of scary, but we'll dive in to week seven here with Ryan in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our week eight and uh, college football betting podcast with Dr. Ed Fang is posted, breaking down his thoughts on a pretty fun slate on the college side of things as well. That's up also on the FanDuel YouTube page. You can subscribe there, but also subscribe to the number or the uh, Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Cast and of course our player prop preview with JJ Zacharyson coming up tomorrow as well. NBA season is underway and it's perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That's up to one thousand dollars back in free bets if your bet doesn't win. FanDuel has all your favorite bets and the, from the money line to the point spread to player props. You can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Plus, with live betting, you'll get updated odds on games that have already started. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So download FanDuel today and get your no-sweat-first bet up to $1,000. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21-plus in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's take a look here at week number seven. And Ryan, I think one of the tougher things for me this week is we got some bad quarterback play. And I have my model, and I can put in a projected passing efficiency, but sometimes it's hard to gauge just how bad Guys like P.J. Walker are going to play. Guys like Taylor Heineke might play. Like Heineke, I've got a bigger sample on. I can get a better gauge on that. And sometimes, even after I put in the wretched numbers I expect from these guys, my model will still bet, tell me to bet the commanders. I don't want to do that uh, because it's a tough situation to figure out. So I wanted to ask you, do you like betting those games where there's a lot, like a, a really bad quarterback situation? Or is it too much uncertainty for you to handle? Yeah, I, I do like to keep an eye on that on that stuff, Jim, just in the sense that where 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 the public is going or or, or the shops or the sharps for that matter, um, on where they're going. And it is interesting to me to to get in on these guys because I think that so many people view it through the lens of uncertainty. Um, but you know, like Taylor Heineke, for example, let's talk about him. You talk about having a large sample size of him. We know he's just as has the just as much of a gunslinger mentality if not more so than, than Carson Wentz and the reason why they went out to go get a guy 
guy like Carson Wentz is because they couldn't trust Taylor Heineke um, with the ball. Now they're at home going against a Green Bay team that really needs a win. Like the defense mm-hmm. needs to play better. What a better spot than to get them, you know, against this Washington Commanders team. You're looking at the Carolina Panthers. Okay, what a better get right spot for this Tampa Bay team, Tampa Bay defense. The only thing that they can do well is stop the run and contain pass catching running backs. And we saw what happened when Christian McCaffrey went up against the Saints. They they held him to like seven receiving yards or something crazy like that. Like these defenses, when you can find like these little inefficient efficiencies or or little note notes and nuggets um on teams and what they're doing and how they want to attack and looking at the other side um and who they're going against i i feel like there is some merit to taking some chances uh on the opposing team that's going against this opposing quarterback yeah i think we talked about the commanders one specifically on tuesday i was saying like my number showed value there and i didn't want to bet it and then it did actually move their way so i was like okay should i have actually bet this because and the reason i was hesitant was because the reason I even considered it was because Heineke's numbers last year were actually better than Wentz's this year in terms of efficiency. And like, like you said, they have a lot of overlap. The problem is like Heineke is a gunslinger, except for like a water pistol as an arm. Whereas Wentz at least has a cannon, you know, he actually has a decent arm and like, that's the, the key difference there, but he was more efficient last year. So maybe I should have taken the commanders plus five and a half when that was up there. I didn't and a little bit of regret, but, Typically, I'm not going to regret a bet I don't make. I'm much more likely to regret one I do make. So I'm okay with sitting that one out, despite the fact it has moved that direction. So let's talk about some actual fun games. And actually, a good quarterback in Lamar Jackson. We got the Browns at the Ravens. Ravens, six and a half point favorites here. Total is 45 and a half. And, you know, I think that Lamar has been awesome this year. And I think this Ravens offense has massive upside. And they've shown that at times. But they're also three and three. Kind of weird. They've had some odd games against good opponent, opponents for the most part, you know, like the Giants, obviously. Uh, but can they bounce back here and cover against a divisional foe? Yeah, it's tough because the Cleveland Browns have, I, I mean, I don't know what's happened with them over the past couple of weeks, but they have been struggling mightily. Um, they could use a win badly um, as they, you know, are getting geared up to, to possibly, you know, get their, you know, this was the whole talk about the Cleveland Browns. Can they sustain uh, a couple wins and, and make it so that when they get their quarterback back, who's currently not with them on the roster, um, that they would be in contention? And I, I just don't see it right now. I mean, Jacoby Brissett rattled. He had to go against his former team in New England last week. That was ugly. But even before that, um, the thing that concerns me about the Baltimore side, though, is that everybody on this team is is dealing with something you know Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews both popped up on the injury report Devin Duvernay's on the injury report JK Dobbins the defensive guys we know have been on the injury report all year Marcus Peters and others so it really makes it tough to bet on the Ravens right now and the three of the past four games in you know with the Ravens and Browns taking on each other that they you know this number of six and a half it, it's been closer than that so, uh, you know, all things considered, you, you do look at the numbers and Kevin Stefanski has not been great in the division against the spread um, it, when we're talking about the AFC North. So, you know me, I'm a Baltimore Ravens uh, enthusiast when it comes to betting. I, I will take this number, although the hook does scare me a little bit. But because they're at home, granted that they're getting their offensive pieces healthy, like you said, they just they have more of a merit to put this game out of reach than the Browns can to keep up with them. Yeah, I think I agree with you where the Ravens minus six and a half is the way to go with this one. And my, both my models agree with that. Uh, my traditional model, the one that has a prior in there favors the Raven by six, the Ravens by 6.89 points. And my 2022 only model has the Ravens by 7.3. So both those directionally going the same way. It's not a big enough edge where I'm like enthusiastic about it. And I have not taken this myself, but I do think the Ravens are the proper way to go here. You look at their early down efficiency numbers, like they've been the most efficient passing offense in football on early downs this year. And that's, again, passing offense, not like overall offense. They've been the best overall offense too. But like just strictly passing, they have been the best offense in football on early downs. So I think that what we'll see here is some positive regression in the in in their favor. And I think that eventually we'll see Baltimore kind of break out and establish themselves as being a legitimate contender once again, despite their poor record. You know, the Miami game, it happens. The Buffalo game, weird weather, very good opponent. They kept that game close, actually got a lead in that game pretty early on. I understand that one. The Giants one was weird. 
that was legitimately odd, but no Rashad Bateman there. Bateman did get a limited practice in on Wednesday, so he might be back. Uh, Justice Hill got a full practice in too, so maybe they can get some, some health in their running back situation. Gus Edwards might be back. So it's pretty grim. I agree. and But I do think that I agree with you as well as the Ravens minus six and a half being the proper way to look at this game. Let's turn our attention now out west. We got the Chiefs at the 49ers. Chiefs. Two and a half point favorites. This was three. Another one where I said, I don't want to bet it. And then it moved the way I said, I didn't really want to go. Uh, so whatever. I was three. It's now two and a half. Total is 48 and a half. And the 49ers had a big letdown against Atlanta last week. And potentially that's why I was hesitant to bet them. I was like, ah, it's kind of annoying to see this happen. Um, but can they turn it around here and keep it close and cover or potentially win outright against the Chiefs? I, <laughs> this is a fun one because it came down, like you said, it came down by the hook to, uh, you know, uh, under three, two and a half. And it's just Patrick Mahomes, whether he's on the road or whether he's at home, like getting him under the magic number of three, it just seems like you, you just take this every time. Now let's talk about the numbers. Kyle Shanahan and, and Jimmy Garoppolo are absolutely amazing as home underdogs. Um, in the regime, they, they, they've been phenomenal. I believe over 60% uh, win rate for Jimmy G. He's one of the best uh, quarterbacks at home as a dog. Um, but this Kansas City Chiefs team, they're coming off of, you know, a, a devastating loss at home to the Bills. We know how much wins are going to matter to them now that they have lost to, you know, the Bills of trying to get that one seed in the AFC. Uh, they are looking forward and have a bye uh, coming up the next week. So, you know, all things considered, yeah, this 40 49ers offense, we know that they need to do one thing. They need to establish the run. And the Kansas City defense, that's been the one thing that they've been able to do. They have a pretty decent DVOA against the run. It's against the pass is where they struggled. So, you know, if they're able to contain Jeff Wilson, if they're able to contain Debo Samuel on the run, I got to take the Chiefs here. You also look at the matchups in the past 2018 and 2020 in the in the Super Bowl when these two teams met. Um, they, you know, you're looking at the Chiefs winning these games handily against Jimmy G and Kyle Shanahan. So I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid on this one. Yeah, fond memories of the Super Bowl. Damian Williams going uh, bananas. That was a lot of fun yep. uh, for single game DFS and stuff like that. Um, I think with the 49ers, part of the other reason why I was hesitant was because they're really banged up. Uh, and yes. specifically, yes. I was worried about Trent Williams, but he was back at practice on Wednesday. So it's possible that means that uh, they get him back for this game. And if that does, that's a that's an actual needle mover there. Now, Eric Armstead didn't practice uh, Wednesday, wasn't expected to practice. Some other guys were out, too. So it's not a one guy cures all situation. I would expect once I add in absences for Armstead and guys like that, maybe it comes back to favoring the Chiefs. Right now, it does. Uh, I think I should take the 49ers still. It's got the Chiefs by 1.38 points, my traditional model, the one I trust. Um, so a little bit of value on the 49ers is not enough for me to bet it, and especially once I factor in the fact that it's probably going to move um, once I add in any absences. Like if Williams can't go, it's going to say right. – it's not going to say to bet the 49ers. So he's a, yep. he's a big one, and Armstead as well. Factor into that for me, too. Let's talk about another one that's moved. We got the Seahawks at the Chargers. I did take this one. And I feel pretty good about it. A lot of movement in the Seahawks favor the Geno Smith revenge game. Chargers six point favorites here. It opened at seven. Then it was six and a half. It's now down to six. Totals 51 and a half. I also did take the under on this game. I don't know how I feel about that. That's that. that that hasn't moved as much, but I'm a little bit worried more. I think about Geno against his defense. But uh, we got a six-game sample, Ryan, on Geno Smith cooking and the Seahawks playing good football. Can they do that again and cover? And it seems like make a lot of betters very happy in this game. Yeah, well, we, we were on Geno Smith last week, or I was on Geno Smith last week to cook against I was Arizona as well. defense. It was mostly and... because I finally got to bet against Arizona, which I was ecstatic about, and it was it worked <laughs> beautifully. It worked beautifully. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. No idea what's going on in the land of Arizona. But yes, the Seattle team has been absolutely so much fun to bet on, to play, to even just watch. Uh, and, you know, I just have basically long time ago, and we're only in week seven, but five weeks ago, I basically was already kissing uh, my under Seahawks bets, you know, goodbye <laughs> uh, futures, that is. Um, so when you're looking at this, okay, so 
the the Seattle Seahawks, what does Pete Carroll want to do? He wants to run the ball with 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 whoever he has back there. Kenneth Walker looked great in his first, you know, stint of action as being the lead back. I expect him to get going here. But in, with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett for Geno Smith, I mean, this secondary is really in trouble. J.C. Jackson's been hurt. He got benched last game. Um, it's a short week for the Chargers. They are at home, but the C- the Seattle team is used to traveling down to L.A. because they play the Rams twice a year. So maybe the Seahawks, uh, you know, 12 shows up there in L.A. It's tough sledding for the Chargers, who also, uh, like the Chiefs, are looking ahead at a bye next week. I think they will be getting Keenan Allen back this week. But no, Joey Bosa has really um, – hurt them when you're talking about them being able to get pressure. Um, but even against the blitz, Geno Smith has been carving up teams all this year. So I, I just have to go with the Seahawks side here um, in this one. And, and you know, it, it's, it's painful for me because the Chargers were the team that I was liking in the AFC to be able to try and get the Lombardi. But, you know, we just got to go with what the numbers are telling us right now. And it's it's really tough to bet on the Seahawks, especially at this number here of, of where they're dogs. Well, yeah, I think that you mentioned the Chargers and how much you like them. I did, too. And my numbers love them. I think that entering the season, they were a top five or top 16 in my power rankings. And that number, the prior, is still in it. The prior is adjusted to account for no Rashawn Slater and no Joey Bosa uh, because those are like, you know, long term injuries. So the prior has been adjusted for those injuries. But. The model that loves the Chargers still says to bet Seattle in this game. Uh, it favors the Chargers by 4.99 points. So that number, even with a heavy prior in there, says bet Seattle. My more aggressive 2022 model, which penalizes. I made this. I'm going to be honest. I made this this model specifically because the stupid 2021 Chargers, because they they made <laughs> me so mad. What they would do is they would jack around on early downs and just like play idiotic football. And then they'd use Justin Herbert's heroics on third downs and fourth downs to bail them out. We saw that in the Raiders game. We saw that week one against Washington last year, like that happened. And I was like, okay, I think they're overvalued in my model because it's not accounting for how stupidly they play. So I literally (laughs) created this model to account for how dumb they are. And that model, the one that should hate the Chargers does. It has it has the Chargers favored by 0.29 points against Seattle at freaking home <laughs> for the 2022 only model. I think that's too far. I can't go that far, but I think that the the Seahawks are the right side here. I, I took uh, the money line plus 250 on Tuesday. I think that's down to 210 or 205 at, at FanDuel oh, wow. right now. I'm loving it. Feeling very good about that. Um, I am so, so annoyed by this team. It's like a spite bet. Um, like the, the Seahawks yeah. against the Cardinals, that's kind of a spite bet against the Cardinals. This is a spite bet against Joe Lombardi, the way he's running this offense and bottling up Justin Herbert, not letting us let our big, beautiful son do what he can. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. How frustrating was that against, you know, the Denver Broncos on on Monday night? I mean, they had so many chances to, you know, put this team away earlier than they did. And you, you're let, relying on a kicker who basically tore his hamstring in the game and decided <laughs> to keep kicking and then get surgery afterwards. Um, it is frustrating to, you know, trust this team and offense um, with the way the coaching staff has, has treated them as such. But uh, Justin Herbert, I mean, you know, he always is is in the mood to, you know, sling it and, and put up some pointers. I do think the over, uh, as you bet the under, Jim, I do think the over could be interesting here, um, just with the fact that the way these two teams play, and especially if Seattle is able to get up to an early lead, and, you know, if it's left up to Justin Herbert to just sling it all around, um, this could be a fun one. Yeah, if the chart, if the Seahawks get an early lead, I'm going to write that ticket off. Like that ticket's done, dead. Because yeah. if if the Chargers get put in a situation where they can actually use Justin Herbert the way he was built to be used, that's a bad thing for my underbet. So I think that like there's right. a very obvious path to know over there, and I agree that like that is a scary scenario for me for sure. But let's go Seahawks. Let's go Geno in your revenge game <laughs> against the Chargers. Uh, where else is he in value in Week Seven over at FanDuel Sportsbook, Ryan? Oh, let's see. What is my what is my card say here? Okay, so let's talk about the Raiders, who are mm-hmm. seven point favorite against the Texans at home. Uh, both these teams are coming off of a bye, but I just don't. I mean, it, the, you know, shout out to you know Lovey Smith and, and everything that he's you know doing to try and right the ship and kind of keep them in the news and such. And he inherited a, a tough situation there in Houston and David Smells and and all that. So I just don't see how they can keep up um, with this team. I mean, I guess you can maybe 
try and keep me and Pierce going and just hope that this stays in as much of a neutral game script as you possibly can. But Derek Carr coming off the bye, I think that they try and, you know, get Dev- Devontae Adams going while we're looking at what this uh, what this little assault that happened uh, with him when he was in KC is going to come to fruition. He still gets to play um, outside of that. But Josh Jacobs in a phenomenal spot. I do like his defense, too, going against Davis Mills. Um, so seven points there coming off of the bias, I think, is interesting. And then let's talk about unders. I mean, unders have been hitting at an insane rate this year. I think it's like one of the lowest scoring seasons since 94 or something like that I read earlier this week, um, which is insane to think about the way that, you know, everything is geared towards the offenses and scoring points. And that's the whole point of doing this and why the NFL's made billions of dollars uh, because everything's geared towards the quarterbacks. Uh, but, you know, looking at unders this week, Bucks Panthers under 40 and a half have to take this with the way that the Tampa Bay defense has been able to contain running backs. And if Christian McCaffrey isn't able to go, Although um, they have been showcasing him, I thought that was very interesting to see last week that Christian McCaffrey pretty pretty much got every play call like in the first three four series of the game um, because they are showcasing him to trade him, I believe. But uh, I just think that you know the Panthers will struggle to score, and the Bucks, you know, they're just trying to get some type of semblance of offense going here, but they won't, you know, if it's out of reach, I don't think they'll need, they can put up 27 and the Panthers can put up 10 and this under will still hit. Uh, the Jets and Broncos under 38 and a half too. I mean, we know, we, I think we know what the situation is for the Denver quarterback situation. I think it's going to be Brett Ripon or however you pronounce his name. Uh, Ripon, yeah. Jets, Ripon. Okay. I, thank I you. think so, he had a game against the Jets on like Thursday night football one time. Um, I could <laughs> be wrong about that, but I think that happened. It might have been a Trevor Simeon game. I'll look into this. You go ahead. I'll look into this okay. and try to see if so, that was actually a thing that happened. <laughs> so normally that stuff would concern us, right? It's like, okay, how is Brett Rippon going to play? Um, they talked about getting Melvin Gordon back into the mix and going. We know the outside receivers are pretty out here in Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. So you're looking at, man, is there a way that they can get over on this defense? But the Jets' defense has been absolutely legit. I mean, these corners for the Jets and and what and Robert Sala, um, what they've been able to do has been absolutely incredible. So you know, the Jets, the the <laughs> freaking line had from I think it was three and a half of where it opened at to now it's one. Um, so that. That's just telling you how they feel about the Jets and this team. It's still Zach Wilson, though. So, you know, on the offensive side of things, I'm not sure how it goes. But I just expect, you know, the Jets defense is stout. The Denver defense is probably the best thing about this team right now on the under there. Yeah, my 2022 only numbers have Denver as being, I think, the best offense in football or best defense in football. One of the best somewhere up there. Uh, that game was not a Trevor Simeon game. That was against Cleveland where he broke his leg or his ankle or whatever, which is very sad. But the Burt Ripon game was a Thursday night game in 2020. I think it was Thursday night. Yeah, Thursday night game in week four or something like that. And Brett Ripon started for the Broncos. He had uh, 31 pass attempts, two touchdowns, three picks. That game ended up being a 37-28 win for the Broncos. So Brett Ripon, the magic against the Jets, uh, coming back to the surface for this week. Uh, but you like the under 38 and a half. So you're not expecting any more fireworks like we saw on that one. I'm, I'm not. But you know what? I'll tell you this. If, if the bet doesn't hit, I will live for, you know, a Brett Rippon explosion and the game going over and just – having to hear the talking heads talk about is Brett Rippin the answer and just what do they do with giving Russell Wilson all that money? Uh, that would I be mean, worth like, it. I would just be Kermit, Kermit frog emoji <laughs> sipping the tea, like just enjoying that uh, on Monday night so, or on Monday uh, morning. You know, that'll happen because we had, we had at one point had a talking point about Cooper rush and a Dak Prescott quarterback controversy. Right. So if, you, if you can have that, the dumbest conversation that's ever occurred, then you can have this one, which is, I mean, given the way Russ has played, not as dumb, but like if you can, it's within, I, I would never doubt any storyline after that uh, Cooper Rush storyline popped up. So I, I understand that for sure. See, uh, Russ did get a limited session in Wednesday, but the initial reports were pretty grim. So I'm not really sure what will wind up there, but even if he plays, I think under 38 and a half is fully, fully 
within the range of outcomes. That is all we got here for week number seven on the NFL side of things. We have our player prop preview coming up tomorrow with JJ Zach Reason. We'll also, uh, we also have our college football podcast up with Ed Feng uh, on the cover in the spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page. Get those by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Big thank you to Ryan Williams swinging back by. Uh, despite all the unpacking, all the craziness going on in your life, I appreciate you being back with us for today. Uh, Ryan, good luck to you as that all continues, and we'll talk to you once again next week. I appreciate you having me, Jim. Back to be here with everybody uh, who's rocking along with Covering the Spread all year. Go out and get that money, and let's do this thing. Hopefully, I'll see you next week, Jim. Absolutely. We'll try to get that money and we'll be rooting hard for Geno Smith and the Seahawks. Uh, Ryan is on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Good luck to all of you. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some player props for this week. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 